Hi guys, Yaka here. So it's a new new uh, Hearthstone year, and we got a new expansion coming out, um, Ashes of Outlands. And of course, I have a bunch of packs that I'd like to open. Uh, and this time, we do have uh, duplicate protection. So it's kind of you only get the two cards, and then after that, you are guaranteed to not get any more than the two duplicates that you can play in a class or uh, in the neutral cards unless you get the full uh, collection of uh, common or rare so, and so on so it's it's going to be uh, it's not going to be that many um, duplicates that we're getting this time around even though usually you get your commons and rares um, but I do have a bit of different packs from different expansions that I'm opening. Ma the majority of what I have is for Ashes of Outlands. And I think we'll just want to jump right into it. Um, the number of legendaries that I'm hoping to get to get the average kind of log is that within the first 10, I'm guaranteed to get a legendary. Uh, so that's 135 packs left after the first legendary. Um, Meaning that I should get around seven more um, with the 135 packs. So if it gets seven, I'm a bit above average lucky. So eight in total. Um, so eight legendaries, that's better than average luck, just slightly. Uh, below, that's unlucky. And above, that is lucky. Um, so I think... With that said, let's just jump right into it and let's hope we get some crazy good packs. I'll just open the leftover stuff. <laughs> We're off to a good start here. A couple of epics. Apparently, we we're missing Icicle. Nothing too crazy. <coughs> I guess we just have to get through these. These are the cards that we've ever we've seen every one of us. Saviors of Ludo. Something that we've seen before. Oh, nice. Man. Even the first legendary we open isn't from Ashes and oh, Ashes, um, Ashes of Outlands. At least you know, I actually thought I had that one. Apparently not. Well, I do actually. It's because I have the full. Um, I have all the legendaries. That's why I remember play. I have it in one of my decks that I used to play. So it's uh, it's just a duplicate. Well, torch saboteur. I only had one of those. So that's fine. And of course, those legendaries doesn't count towards the be being lucky because that's from different different sets altogether. <laughs> but always nice to get the legendaries. Legendary. Morrison the Infinite. I actually think I have Morrison Golden. Actually. Cool. Let's hope that uh, I haven't used up all the luck when we get to the regular pack opening of the new expansion. Just that we carry over the luck. Cool. 
Overload. I actually think that's being played in an Overload share and deck at the moment. It's probably not going to be amazing in the new, uh, in the new year here. A lot of the <laughs> okay, how many legendaries was that already? Come on, man! Banner smart. With this amount of luck, I'm not, I'm not getting any legendaries at all. Golden I have it coming. I used up all the luck. Good. Well, off to a great start, even before we start. So let's have a look. That's a cool animation. I haven't seen all of the cards yet. Secret Rogue is kind of a thought of strategy. Belgrave Freeze an enemy, Frozen Shadow Weaver. Okay. I'm also thinking about these cards as um, arena cards as well. Deal one damage to a minion and give it spell damage plus one. These are some, those two are good arena cards. Dealing a pinging a damage because you don't really care too much about the spell damage, but just having a ping. It's a strictly better um, Elven Archer, and that's a card that you can use in the arena. Vivid Spores. Okay. I think there might be some kind of Evolve Shaman that is playable. But of course, lists have to refine and stuff. Rocket Orc Merchant. Orc Merchant. Another pink card. Got two of those there. Dormant for two turns and then rush. Mm, it's an okay arena card. Give it divine shield. Okay. So there's kind of a theme going on with uh, some one drops where you ping something, damage it, and then uh, it gets a bonus effect. It's going to be interesting in arena. Germination. Generally, generally, when you can say that you cheat, mana cheat something, for instance, if you have a high cost minion on the board, then germination is, is definitely good. It's just a matter of, is it possible? Is it something that where you have something sticking around for a turn and then you can use germination on it? And that's usually the thing in Hearthstone where it's difficult to have stuff sticking on the board for a long time, especially the significant threats. Golden Comet. Those needs to be dealt with rather quickly. After your opponent casts a spell summon a random four cost minion. Could be good. It's good in arena. Imprisoned Sager. It's okay. It's not great in arena. You need the right deck for it in arena. And but this could be something because each and every time you're um Cheating mana. That's something that, that is usually going to be a strong card. And you can target because you can do some really nutty combos. While at full health this has plus plus two attack. So it's a three mana three six, at least for the first hit. Okay, seems like it could be good in arena, but when it drops to one attack, that's that's kind of awful. Rare. Skull of Gul'dan, a really powerful card. Okay, let me get my legendary fast, so I can get to the pity counter stuff. Turn our SKP. Bad arena card. Blistering rot. 
Summon a rock with stats equal to this minions. Um, Thorgo for two turns when this awakens equipped with three to X. So it's going to be because on turn three you could play a fiery war X that costs three mana. So for one mana, you delay an effect. So you save two mana, but you're still on turn three. I think this could be good in arena. Is it good? Uh, maybe not in an aggressive. It needs, it's kind of an aggressive standard uh, minion, at least for a one drop, but it's not going to be uh, awoken. Uh, it's not going to be live until uh, turn three. And then you get the axe. Not sure. The dormant cards. I don't think there's a great future for those cards in the um, in the aggressive decks. It seems like an aggressive minion. Dragon Maw Skystalker. Seems like a good and sticky minion for the arena. Burning score with deal two damage if that kills the target gain stealth. Wow. Gain two armor. Deal two damage to a minion gain two armor. Okay, so it's not doesn't even have to be your own or anything like that. Marsh spawn. Discover spell. Wow. Man. These are crazy cards. I have two germination. I shouldn't be seeing that card for a while now. Come on, legendary! Oh, this is a good thing. Prison to Monkeless. Nether Wing. Nether Wind Portal. Well, I tried to play with this a little bit. Skeletal Dragon, and the enemy was an added drain. Okay. There might be some kind of Dragon Priest available. Skull of Gul'dan, that's the second one. Next four packs, I'm getting a legendary. Within the next four packs. There we go. Serpent Shrine. Serpent Shrine Portal. Deal three damage, summon a random three cost. Seems like an okay spell. Spine Mistress, I think that's going to be a core card if Stealth Rogue is going to be something. Takes damage, gain plus two attack. Whenever, so it's so if there's like three one drops that hit into this, then it's going to be plus six. It's not going to be great and then constructed, but I think in arena it's going to be all right. Dragon Ball always see give another friendly minion plus two plus two. Okay, if there's going to be a board centric priest. It's going to be something. Okay, let's see the list. Legendary. Wow. One of the prime cards. Can't even remember the. Can't remember the prime. I need to check that out. But generally, I think all the primes, all the prime cards are rather good. All right, let's see. That's one. Ambush. I think there could be some kind of spell druid. That makes sense. Yeah. Hand of Gul'dan. There might be some kind of, I've seen someone theorize that the Hand of Gul'dan could be part of a uh, Su playstyle, uh, a Su lock with some kind of discard effects in it. And I actually do agree. It seems kind of viable. Also, from a budget point of view. But if it's going to be good enough to compete against the uh, Demon Hunt, that's going to be something else completely. Quilfang Warlord, that's a 
racy arena card. Probably not going to be good enough for destructive for arena. That's amazing. Prisoned Antian. Antian? Antian. Alright. <clears throat> Apotheosis. <coughs> All right. Dark portal. Okay, that's something where draw a minion if you have at least eight cards, and it costs five less. So kind of a hand luck. Four mana that you get targeted draw. And then it costs five less. Could be some kind of combo deck that's possible. Death Riddle draw a spell. The one health is kind of, yeah, a bit of a setback there. Battle cry. When this comes out, it's a five mana five eight. That's really good. It falls to one attack. I don't think it's going to be strong enough in the arena. Because one attack doesn't really do anything in the arena. And for construct, it's not good enough! Whoa! Which one are we getting? Legendary! There aren't Gore Fiend. Destroy all. Actually. I think this can really, this has some huge combo potential, somewhere, in some deck. It might be wild, who knows. But just destroying your whole board and then bringing them back. Just think back to, um, what was the cube? Cube lock, that's what we call it, I can't remember. Gluttonous. Gluttonous cube, something like that. Where you destroy the minion, and then when you destroy the cube, you got two minions back. This destroys your whole board, it might be damaged and so on, but you get your whole board back. But also any potential death rattle effects um, also take effect, and then you get the minion back before the death rattle is actually procced. So I think this could be good somewhere. In some kind of deck. Two legendaries. Wow, I have some amazing man, luck, man. man. Immolation aura. Oh, pretty cool. Another coil fang. Box struck clacker. If there's going to be some kind of uh, evolved shaman, I think box struck clacker is going to be one such card that is needed in that deck. I'm not sure. I think the Desert Hair is part of Saviors of Uldu. I think it might be something that we will see. At least something that will, will be experimented with. Augmented Porcupine, not good enough in Constructed, but good in Arena. Two Legendaries, and we're only 15 packs in. Iron Bar, really good card. Epics. Golden Woman. Ash Tongue Battle Lord, Torn Lifesteal. Uh, Demon Hunter card. It's actually quite good, I think. At least for Arena. I oh, know I'm talking a lot about Arena, but I'm also playing a lot in Arena. Fell Summoner, however, is a rather bad Arena card because two drop can take care of your six drop. Dragon Maw Osea, that's the second one, we've already seen that. Uh, Blade Storm, Warrior. deal one damage to all minions, repeat until one dies. I've seen, so if you can, this is actually the opposite of, um, well, it's something different from uh, Warpath. 
um, because you just replay the card but this is about uh, leveling out the amount of health that your opposing uh, your opponent has the minions he has on board and I've seen that some crazy clears I've seen people clear three 10 health minions with this uh, uh, three mana spell I think that there's going to be it needs some refinement but some kind of control warrior is definitely going to be back in the meter somehow. Alright, just a regular pack. <laughs> Crimson Sigil Runner. Da, 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 da. He looks kind of funny. Overgrowth. Yeah, this could be... If there's going to be a big druid or something like that again, it could be something. In summon an incaster with spell damage one plus one seems strong it's three three in stats so you get this one with a death rattle and then you get incaster with a positive uh, with an upside seems strong at least again at least for arena Scrapyard Colossals. Not good enough for Constructed, I think, but definitely good in Arena. Not broken in any way, but a good Arena card, even though it's 10 mana. Aldor Attendant. Librams. Yeah, if there's going to be this Libram Paladin, maybe. Hand of Gul'dan, like I mentioned, that's going to be good. Give you Murlocs plus one plus one. I think I heard somewhere that this is actually going to be an arena card as well. Unstable Fellbolt, deal three damage to an enemy, and a random friendly one. Well, I guess it could be okay. But a bit risky. Could be part of um, kind of a Sioux playstyle, but still, when when you have a Sioux playstyle, you also want to preserve the board that you have. I'm not sure that's going to be great. Pack Tactics, a great card, does it something a little bit different. Um, and when the minion is attacked, you get a copy of it, and if you have bonus effects like Death Rattle or Divine Shield or whatever then the copy also gets it. Cool! Sword and board, we've seen that. Spy Mistress in Cantus Flow. Cost of spells in your deck. Okay, that's going to be interesting. It's I've had people had the, the People that reviewed this card has had really different opinions whether this is good or not. Um, if that's going to be like a pure spell uh, mage somehow, there's a lot of cards that's supporting it, but probably that's not an enough in the game at the moment since we lost three expansions. But down the line, I think this cost reduction could be good. Yeah. Cost reduction is always something to look out for in a, in Hearthstone. Fund of power, discover mage minion. If it has no minions, keep all three. Again, this is something that supports the mage no minion build. Um, it's something that will be exper experimented with, but I'm not sure if it has a lot at the moment. Just having this bun a bunch of random effects is... Probably not going to be enough. Bark Beam. Mm, again, if there's something like uh, a ramp druid, this could be something that's good enough. And a truth seeker, reduce the cost of Librams. Another Libram card. Cursed Vagrant. Uh, Actually, I am thinking that usually the stats isn't good enough even with the death rattle, but having that shadow with stealth might be uh, good enough to play it some kind of um, stealth rogue. Scavenging Shiwara. 
steal six damage random and split among all other minions. Okay. Seems like an okay, at least arena card, but. <laughs> uh, Nightshade, Ma Nightshade Matron. Putting on discard the highest cast card. Again, this is something that can be used in this um, Sula discard playstyle. Yay! I'm probably going to get more or less all of them, except for the epic ones. Shattered Rumpler. Cast a spell last time. It's interesting. Not sure. it's, the stats are fair. It, it passes the vanilla test, uh, where you can say that the mana cost distributed between attack and health is actually uh, the same. So for 5 mana you get 10 points of stats. But I'm not sure, I just think the battle cry, the effect is just fair. It's not broken. I'm not sure it's viable. It depends. But not right now, I think it's going to be good enough. Pioth <laughs> Apotheosis. So Temic Reflection. If it's chosen some a copy of it. Uh, and this totem druid, totem shaman has been popping off, uh, popping up once in a while, but it's just not strong enough. Dragon Maw, Skystalker, we've seen that in Preston. Fellmore, Dormant for two turns when there's an attack and random enemy. Uh, might be good enough for constructed, but an okay arena card. Man. Dragon Maw, Sentinel. Dragon Priest, maybe. There's a few supporting cards. Maybe that's good enough. Oh, another legendary. And what's that? Wow. Golden Common. From some sigil runner. Uh, not a lot of motion going on there. Another walker. Discovery demon. Oh, that's an amazing arena card. I don't think it's good enough for construct. It might be. You need the early game as well. But that's amazing. Draw a beast. It's pretty Man. good. Libra. And the legendary. legendary. If Secret Rogue is going to be anything like a meter deck, then Shadow Jewel Hanar is going to be a very focal card in making that one work. So that's. Um, Great that I have it. It lets me explore the archetype at some point. Glad to get it. I'm not sure it's going to be great or anything, but, but it could be. Because when you're talking about secrets, having that... Oh, Libram of Justice. A 9-1 Inquisitor. Uh, that's pretty bad. In... Yeah, well, that's just pretty bad. Rare. Pack Tactics, that's the second one. 25 cards in, and I've got three legendaries already. Woohoo! Rare! Oh, rare! Oh, rare. Imprisoned Observer. Seems like it's quite good, at least in an arena setting. I'm not sure there's a deck for it in. Uh, Constructed, but there might be cool art though. It looks amazing. Wow! Okay. Okay. Three legendaries. Rare, rare. Oh, that looks pretty cool as well. Supreme Abyssal. Uh, I don't think it's good enough. It's not doing any for eight mana. It's not doing anything, but it's dropped and yeah. Furious Felfin, a very good arena card. <laughs> Another Supreme Abyssal. All right. Draw through cards. Discard any minions drawn. Okay. So card draw wise, if it's going to be some pure spell, um, Druid, it's going to be good. But I'm not sure it's strong enough. I 
I think what we'll see in the early game and the early days of this painter is that uh, Sex splits someone a copy of his. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Support some kind of board centric. <coughs> Sorry about that. Board centric playstyle for priest. I'm not sure if it's. Warglaze of Asenath. Cool. I think we'll see Demon Hunter be a strong tier 1 class. And then people have to figure out some way of beating the Demon Hunter. I think the people that actually makes this work. I think we've already seen all of these. Priestess of Fury. That's also a very good uh, card for Demon Hunter. Uh, generally, I think it's really good. It can be 6 damage that just goes face. If there's nothing on the board, and it softens up the board at least. If, uh, but it's at the end of your turn. So if you just do some kind of board control, then you can do a seven mana six seven, which damages face six times. Wow. Scryer, we've seen that before. Imprison scrap in dormant for two turns. When this awakens, give all minions in hand. Okay. So it could support some kind of Sue playstyle, but usually in the Sue playstyle, you want to dump your hand fast. So I'm actually thinking. Ah, this really requires some planning that you. Do a discard on drawing. So you can drop this on two or three, and then on turn four you can drop the one. I can't remember the name of it. I just need to get used to the names right now. The one with rush, rush, and, and uh, four mana five five, which discards the highest cost card, which draws you three cards. And then on the next turn, this wakes up on turn 5, and it buffers all the minions that you have in hand. But it's a bit awkward, because you kind of want to play this on turn 2, but you have to wait until turn 3 to play this in order for that combo to happen. But I guess you could also... There's other ways of actually discarding that one, and then drawing minions. It could be good enough. Mm, stand up pack. Supreme Abyssal. I can't be that I have all the common cards. But I think I do because this is my. But I have a golden one. Doesn't that count towards the limit? I don't think I have all the common cards yet. It might be that the golden cards are not counting towards having those duplicate protect, and then you only get the duplicates, and and no triplicates. Yeah. Seems a bit awkward, but I guess that's okay. Blood boy brute cost one less for each damage minion. Hmm. Well, that might be something crazy that you can do here. Mana discounts is always something to keep an eye out for. I'm not sure it's good enough at the moment. But generally those cards are good. And Prison Falcon, they also got one of those golden. Hand of Gul'dan. That I should get. I think that's a triplicate, so I should have all commons now. The way I understand the, the duplicate protection. That's cool. That's rather early. I've seen those before at least. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 
bamboozled. I wonder if it's gonna transform into a random one that costs three more. Uh, wow. It's random, but it seems good. We've seen this before. Iron Bark, we've also seen that. It's a good arena card. <sighs> Maybe not the best of constructed. Bone Chewer Brawler. Takes damage. Gain plus two. The Bone Chewer one. Okay. If you control a secret return and minion, it costs two more. Okay, that's a sap on steroids. Wow! This is a crazy expansion. Man. 30 tricks and cast a spell and draw two cards. Do, isn't there protection against getting triplic uh, triplicates of common cards? Because dirty tricks is the kind of. Oh, I see that before, sorry. Has a spell draw two cards. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, I think it's going to be fine. It's fine, Knuckles. Um, again, maybe some kind of evolved shaman. Another abyssal. Yeah, Alright. Shadow Council. Mm. Random demons. Random effects are also cross class, and there's some crazy demons in. It might be that you can translate a Sue deck into something that can actually go late game for just one mana. Stealth plus three attack is immune this turn. Wow. Tricks. We've seen that before. Nothing crazy there. Not a lot happening in that uh, card art, the golden card art, even though it seems like a very action filled picture. I actually missed one card that I wanted to look into the torrent. Well, oh, that looks cool. Hand of a doll, soul on ash tongue. Uh, too crazy there. Scrap shot. Oh, that's actually seems so good. And it also has the potential to go face. Oh, uh, I've seen that already. Fungal fortune. Infectious spawning after the damage has been turned into infectious spawning. Uh, if it was something that you would shuffle into your opponent's deck, this seems like a fun card and maybe some kind of combo breaker tech card, but nothing more. Than that. That's the one. Deal eight damage to a minion. Cost three less if you can. Spell last turn. Eight damage. I'm 
not sure it's actually even Man. strong enough for a deck slot somehow, but... Has Dreadlord. So on a 5-5 five, five Dreadlord with Lifesteal. That's a Taunt Minion. That could actually be good enough to be run. Ah, oh, maybe not. You need a clear game plan for constructed cards. But a Reno Lies is a really amazing card. Shivara, we've seen Shadow Council. That's seems like a good card. Come on. And pack 100. Oh, that looks cool. That's that's a really nice animation. Great heart sage. Well, if you could show the stealth minion, what we got? Again, the stealth throw. Seems strong, but Bob struck black. Another golden D freeze actually. Apex is smuggler. Two mana, two, three. If you play secret discover a spell. Mohawk Artificer. That's probably going to be the number one best card in arena for this set. At least that's what certain people think, but I do agree that spells are not going to be that significant, but the stat line and you drop it on two and it actually has the stats of an okay three drop. That's just amazing. And you potentially also has the opportunity to capitalize on that spell damage. Death Rattle. Imprisoned Sun Gill. Dormant two turns. If this is actually drawn out of a deck, is it still dormant then? Or is it a is it a play effect? I'm thinking about there's a viable Murloc Paladin list. Is this good enough? Me? At least Murloc Paladin yeah. gets some support in this set as well. Another Libra card. Come on, give me some legendaries. Yeah. I think we've seen all these before. No, stand up back. Another leap from Glowfly Swarm. Again, if there's going to be a spell druid, I think this is going to be good enough. And I think some kind of token spell play, uh, spell token druid could be something. Golden Epic! Golden Epic. <laughs> Moag Artificer. 
that's going to be great. I'll be drafting this a lot in Arena, but having that in gold, it's just amazing. Vivid Spores. <laughs> he looks so funny. Can I resummon this minion? Okay, cool. Another Sun Gill. Nice. I'm definitely getting some really good packs. Oh, I'd like to get a legendary soon. There we go. Da, da, da. Golden legendary. Golden. Cargoth Blakefist. That's the prime card. I think. Oh, what is it? It's going to. Oh, it's this uh, eight mana ten ten. <laughs> And whenever it kills something, then you get 10 armor or something like that. So if you control wire, which is probably going to be good, then this is definitely a good card. So you get Rush as a board controlled mechanic, and then you also get Kargath Prime with Rush and uh, uh, armor generation. Mm. Control Warrior is back, guys. That could actually be something that counters uh, Demon Hunter. Blackjack Stunner. Seven Steroids. Legendary. Legendary. A seal. Okay. So this again, a mana discount. It might not be the case. I think overflow is the highest. No, we should. Ah. Uh, can't remember. If the oh, what is it called? The eight mana spell which floods the board with three ants. If that's still still part of the rotation. But definitely, if you even if it's possible for you to discount this somehow, you have the satyr. Um so if you can discount this somehow and then your uh, then you generate a lot of value from the spells that you have. Then it's funny because this actually works against those spells, I guess, when you're at what is that seven mana? Then they cost zero. Because this which one takes precedence? Is it the spell effect on the card? Or is it the minion which dictates that the spell costs one? Is it going to be costing one or zero? That's going to be interesting to at least figure out. But again, you're cheating out mana, uh, and even though you are not able to discount this, it could be good enough. It's something to watch out for. I think it could actually be good. We see all these. I lost track of my legendaries. We'll have a quick look. Afterwards. Alright, looks nice. Yeah. Imprisoned Fellmore, seen that, deep freeze. Yeah, we see all these. Alright, T. Yeah. Scavengers Engineering Team, all of these we've seen before. We'll just rush on until we get something we haven't seen. Rare. All 
mounts of all these are familiar. Stand attack. Uh, all of these are known cards. Not a good card. I don't think it's a good card, but it looks nice. Epic. Scrap it. Right. Greyheart Sage. That's the second one. Stealth Row. Here we come. We see this one. Cool oh, Furious Felfin. Oh, looks kind of nice. Isn't that the first one actually? Yeah. I think it is. I think we're getting down to the point now with mostly the epics and legendaries. That is of interest to us. Yeah. Marsh Hydra. That's the best, I think one of the best arena cards at least. But I think it might actually be good enough to be played in some kind of big druid if that's going to be something that is viable. But again, I think more like a, seems like more like a spell approach is actually forced as an archetype. Okay, that looks kind of nice. Not a lot into the card art and whenever there's animations in there, but just like to have a look. All familiar cards. Epic. Epic. War 
whole challenge. Uh, I think this. Okay. Uh, maybe if there's some kind of hand buff. But right now, I think it's kind of bad. It lets you target something that's behind torch and stuff. Yeah. I don't think it's good enough. Under an anchor and a random murloc to your hand. Could be good enough in some kind of murloc deck. Yeah. Yeah. Two epics, too rare. Okay. Evocation. I've seen some crazy stuff happen with that one. Cool. Again, that's kind of a spell druid theme, but also like a spell mage theme. Rare golden common. Dirty tricks. Is it sand? Okay, something like that. A lot of fell energy in that picture. the majority of the epics. It's more or less the legendaries that I'll be missing. Pack tactics. Epic. Epic. Oh, Negron Slam. I'm not sure it's going to be a good card, but I will... I'm really looking forward to see that board animation on that one. Just four minions just rushing over the board, hitting your opponent either in the face. It could be a finishing move as well, like 12 points of damage for a clear board. <laughs> Alright, actually take that one. Cool. I think I'll be going to the space bar then. These a little bit faster than familiar cards. Bamboozle. We've seen it before, but it seems like a nice secret. Seven legendaries. I think it should be good enough. I think it's we can call this a lucky pack opening, but I'll need to check this afterwards. I've seen that in the world also. The war. A fishing expedition. Blackjack Stunner. I'm just. I think that's a crazy card. That that card alone seems like it's it's worth investigating a secret rogue build. It's such a strong card. It's completely nuts. Two 
two epics. Librum of Hope. That's the cast that I need. Replicatatron. At the end of your turn, transform a neighbor into a copy of this. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be good. I'm not. I'm not seeing it right now. Destroy a minion if drawn this turn instead. Destroy all minions except this one. Oh. I think that's some kind of control card? Control warlock? Handlock? Maybe? It shouldn't be viable in the zoo at least, but. Yeah, <laughs> he came on fury. Okay, that if I were going to get a golden card, and, and that would be on my top wish list, that would be Kings on fury. That's a couple of people that are going to be envious about that. I think we're well above the 8 one, so at least I got two gold legendaries. So I think this is. Uh, yeah. Ah! That's pretty good. Second Moss Rider. Cool. So many stuff. Rushing away from the portal. Had my fair share of luck here, man. I think I have both of them. I do. Two of these dark glare, what is that all about? Refresh to... I, I... I think that is good. It's like a free hero power. And Pit Commander, if there's going to be a Big Demon Hunter, uh, Big Demon, Demon Hunter deck, then Pit Commander is going to be part of that archetype. Yeah, I 
another gold collection. Stunner. The effect is really great in arena, but having that secret synergy in arena is not realistic. Two, three, ambush with poisonous. All right, this seems really nice. Sure. Looks nice. That's a cool enemy. And for for instance for arena, which is where I usually see the well, I I guess it's more interesting to get the majority of the golden cards, then there's a good chance that stuff is left on the board damaged. Less of a chance to construct it. Dark portal seems good. Hey, bolt fine nargles. I really want to do some kind of evolve shaman. I've had great success with that in the past. I'm not sure it's viable. We'll see eventually. Didn't get my legendary. Come on. Golden common. Oh, golden common. And the last one. Hey, yeah, it's actually a good pack to finish on, even though it's just two uh, rares. Let's have a look, shall we? Legendary. And then we focus on the Outland set. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight. I think I got that. Eight. Because I think I got that from the pre purchase. Pretty sure. So actually, we are just a little bit more than average lucky. But I think this is going to be. This has been a, an amazing pack opening. A bunch of golden stuff and golden legendaries as well. So um, I'll be uh, looking forward to trying stuff out, seeing how the new meta shapes up, and if we're going to be constructing any good decks. I hope I'll be able to share some of that with you guys. Uh, if I do find that really good Demon Hunter counter, uh, usually the community finds it a little bit sooner than the individual player does, but it has to come from somewhere. Um, but it seems like it's a really good expansion, and. We'll see how stuff shakes up, but um, thanks for sharing this moment with me, guys, and see you next time. Bye-bye.